All right. Okay, cool. So where are you coming out of? Uh, right now I'm in Italy, actually. Wow, where are you at in Italy? Uh, Tuscany, a town called Montepulciano. Okay. Yeah, I had a uh, pen pal in high school that lived in yeah. Castle Ferentio. And I and I travel. My relatives are from uh, half of them are from Naples. The other half are from Shaka. But uh, I've been to Italy a few times. It's uh, it's wondrous out there. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Cool. So well, I'm lucky hey, to live here. You, so so you do that. That is your home. Yeah, for now. That's wonderful. Well, we're gonna peel back the onion layers and get to all of that. So um, first and foremost, what I would like to do is see. How did you survive COVID? The last three years was quite intense. Um, how did you get through it? And how did it change you? Well, that was big changes um, for me, especially being in the health profession. So my clinic was not actually considered a necessary primary care facility because it's Ayurveda, which is not a legally licensed medicinal system in the United States. During the COVID time, I was living in California and had an Ayurvedic clinic there in Northern California. So what I noticed was a huge increase in people willing to do online consultations and people looking for systems of medicine like Ayurveda that are not the mainstream in the United States because they were suffering from all these symptoms that weren't going away even after the initial infection so on and so forth. A lot of fear obviously increased and people started really focusing on health and uh, comorbidity became a big deal. So people who knew that they were immunocompromised would start contacting us. And it affected me personally because I was working a lot more. Um, you know, I had to really be on it and try and help people through in a way that wasn't just here, take a pill, wait for your symptoms to go away, but more in a way of let's try and work on your health from the bottom up and that will give you resilience and then you'll be able to recover from any kind of COVID. So I did, I personally got COVID once. Um, it was relatively mild, thank, thankfully, and you know, but I got the gist of how people were feeling. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about your practice. What 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 is it that you offer? What is it that you exactly do? So I'm an Ayurvedic doctor in the United States and Europe, and we offer holistic health from an Ayurvedic perspective. So for people who don't know what Ayurveda is, Ayurveda is a the world's oldest system of health. Um, that's still intact today and practiced all over the world, but mainly in India. And it's about 10,000 years old. It was originally, I don't know what you say, discovered by indigenous women living in what's now called India and is a completely fundamentally different way of looking at health than what the average American is exposed to throughout their life. So let's say we put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. And one of the kids asks you, what do you do for a living? How would you explain it to them? Well, I'd say is that they would come and they would see me and we would talk about everything going on in their body um, from the small things to the big things. And as we're having that discussion, I would do things like give them an Ayurvedic pulse reading, which isn't just checking the pulse, but a method of learning about all sorts of things going on in the body I'd look at their tongue, palpate their abdomen, kind of routine stuff like that. And over the course of the conversation and the assessment, we'd start to see their underlying health patterns or ill health patterns. And from that place, we address it with food. We address it with lifestyle. And we address it on a mental level as well. And mental, psychosomatic, mental, emotional level. And we address it with herbal remedies. And so we would help that third grader start to cultivate a new lifestyle that's much healthier than what they've been living. And that heals. What I don't understand is why the, the Western medicine 
refutes things that are natural like that. Like that makes sense to me right there. If you have some underlying issues that are going on, those all of those things make total sense to me. Why is it that Western medicine or those that are in charge are so sketchy about something that's been around the longest than anything else? A uh, few reasons, and this has obviously been a contemplation I've had over the last 13 years of clinical practice. Um, okay, so reason number one is everyone, if they haven't already woken up to the fact that it's completely profit-driven, they should. Yeah. It's, it's. I mean, that's just the reality. A, a lot of people are outspoken about that. That's not just my personal opinion. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, there's incentive to keep people sick. But I think the real reason, to tell you the truth, is that most people, when confronted with the types of changes that they need to make to truly be healthy, don't want to do it. Yeah. And that creates a need for Western medicine. Because if you're sick and you don't want to stop smoking, whatever, just to use an example, right? Where else are you going to go? Yeah. Right. So actually, I think at a fundamental level, it's our personal choices or lack thereof that create the need for Western medicine. On the on the whole, of course, there are wonderful things that come out of Western medicine, incredible surgical techniques, all that stuff. I yeah. Mean, just but in general, broad strokes, right? Yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah. So when you were in the third grade, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, I had no idea in the third grade. So you didn't want I to be a doctor? To no, no, I did not actually. I did not discover Ayurveda until I was 24. Okay. Okay. So talk to me a little bit about heroes, role models. Who's really inspired you in your life? Well, the one who introduced me to Ayurveda actually has really inspired me. Uh, his name is Joseph Rich. He became my mentor at 24. I'd, I'd already been practicing yoga. He's a yoga teacher. And um, I started practicing much more seriously with him. And I was looking for a career change at the time I was in real estate, um, believe it or not. And I knew I didn't want to stay there. So I was already getting interested in more of the Eastern arts and Ayurveda came to my doorstep and I decided to jump in. So tell me where you were born and raised. How, were, how did these seeds get in you? Not only for being in medicine, but real estate, how, how did this kind of the seeds and the plan, how did it? grow into who you are today? I was born in Los Angeles um, and I grew up in West Los Angeles and I knew, you know, I, you, you get sick, you go to the doctor and hopefully they can help. And I went to college also outside of just outside of Los Angeles uh, in Claremont. And I had this like nagging back issue um, that was becoming really, you know, annoying for an 18 year old. And I went to so many doctors and all that stuff. And, you know, after maybe 10 doctors who couldn't, you know, they just kind of ran me through the process. Right. One of them sat me down and said, look, we're not going to be able to help you. Don't keep coming, you know? Um, and he said it very kindly, right. He was trying to help me out. He's like, you're just wasting your time. No one's going to find an answer for you. You need to seek elsewhere. And uh, so that was kind of like a wake-up call. To me. So I started practicing yoga, and then it went on from there. So talk to me a little bit about what is it like to move to another country, to bring your practice to Italy? What was that like? Well, it came with its fair share of challenges. Of course, there's learning a new language, um, introducing it. In California, there was some awareness of Ayurveda. In Italy, there's much less. So creating that awareness in not just Italy, but Europe, um, it's slowly growing. But I did bring a lot of online business with me. So a lot of my online consultations have remained. So that made the transition a lot easier um, for a lot of reasons. And... But, you know, if you get talking to people, everyone on some level is interested in their health. Whether they're going to do anything about it, that's a different story. But on some level, everyone cares about what's going on in their body. So there's a natural curiosity. And I just start talking about it. 
and Europeans have a different mindset on things. I mean, there's a different level of activity that goes into them. I think there's a different level from what I noticed when I was there. There's a different le level of willingness and just kind of an overall mental um, fortitude that's different from from the states. I mean, people tend to be thinner, more active. There's things that are just fundamentally different that would make me think that you would be embraced in, in a whole different way in Europe. Yeah, it's been different. Europeans, it's like you say, but I do have to say that over time, it's becoming more Americanized. Everything is. Um, and that goes for like India too. Um, so, but that's obviously there's still the old European feel. And yes, people don't have such horrendous habits as a lot of the people in the United States that really destroy health. But they have their fair share of bad habits too. Let's not. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, there's there's yeah. no tr there's no true utopia. Um, yeah. So, if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now, whether it's related to your profession or not, who would you love to meet and talk to? It's a good question. Right now, I would want to talk to Esther Perel. Okay. Um, I think that she carries, for those who don't know who Esther Perel is, she's a relationship therapist, but she has really embraced um, a more holistic and creative mindset about it, I believe. And I think that a lot of diseases, um, I, I don't think, I know for a fact that a lot of diseases originate, if not all diseases originate from our inner issues that are reflected in our relationships. Um, and I think there's a huge calling to do a lot of health work around all that. So I would want to pick her brain as to how she really sees it all. So what is your motivation every day? What is, what is, what is the thing that gets you up out of bed, that gets you moving, that gets you wanting to help and heal people? I think two things. One is... You know, there's just, I've cultivated myself into being able to, so, as being someone who's able to help in some way, and I want to share that, you know. Um, and the other thing is, you know, there are a lot of mysteries as to why humans make themselves sick, and then also make the planet sick. And even when we're saying we love each other, and we tell our kids we love them, and we tell our spouse we love them, at the same time, we're doing these really damaging toxic things um simultaneously like i just remember growing up you know a memory that's always stuck with me is going back to the cigarettes my dad was a heavy smoker and he was really starting to suffer health issues and i remember as a little child saying like you know dad don't you don't you love us like why wouldn't you stop if you loved us right don't you want to be with us and you know i think there's something just really foundational about that and it's always been a big mystery to me and myself included i'm not saying i'm an angel by any means <laughs> hardly right but there's something inside humans that like cares and doesn't care at the same time and um you know that all gets into our autonomic nervous system and uh, there's layers and layers and layers upon it but i'm really motivated to try and answer that question at a really simple fundamental level and i don't think i've found that answer yet to tell you the truth it's a weird psychological catch 22 that humans get trapped into, you know, it's just, it, it's so hard to separate that zygote and do the right thing. I remember when I was getting ready to have my first child, I a hundred percent got rid of smoking. Like it was just gone. I haven't gone back. You know, my dad used to always tell me every night after he quit, he would have a dream about smoking. It never got out of his blood. Now, for me, I haven't really, it's just not even a thing. Every once in a while, it'll get in there, but it's the best thing that I ever did for, for myself because of him. And I think it's just, it's good. It's good to get to that point where you can uh, save your temple because, man, you get to a point in your life where it can be too late. Oh, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. It can be too late. And so, we don't want to get to that point. No. Ayurveda says don't get to that point. It says prevent is way better than cure. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about what's been one of your best client success stories you've been involved with. I'd say my 
best in the sense that you there was the most visible improvement uh, was a young a young man that I work I still work with but worked with for many years who was suffering from severe Crohn's uh, disease. So he was when I met him he was about eighty pounds as a twenty seven year old and um, very very sick having eight to ten bowel movements a day. Um, you know had to go to the hospital was getting IVs and all the you know you guys get the story. So. We had to do something kind of counterintuitive. Um, a lot of the dietary advice he was given was, of course, to get a lot of calories in him, right? But actually, uh, Ayurveda has a different philosophy, which is you can only eat as much, you should only eat as much as your body can digest at any given moment. Otherwise, you're actually adding toxicity to the system, which will then result in a whole bunch of things like inflammation and stuff like that. So, you know, he had to make a choice because, of course, the diet we were suggesting was very low calorie. Um, and that was scary to the family. It's like, well, what if he goes, you know, lower and all. So anyways, they decided, they decided that they were going to try it and do the Ayurvedic route. And through a lot of work, a lot of diet, very strict diet, very specific herbal protocol, uh, some emotional work, uh, not some, a lot of emotional work on where the issue was really coming from, which was primarily with his father. Um, and mother, but the, the triggers were mainly with his father, um, all that kind of stuff, all that work, he started to recover. And now he's, um, you know, at his high point, he's lost a little weight now because of some life circumstances, but his high point, he was up to 120 pounds going to college, um, all that stuff. So that that's been very successful. And I think it's a good example of how Ayurveda looks at the situation quite differently than what we've been taught in the West. Yeah. So as you look back on your life, let's say you have a dream tonight, you run into a much younger version of yourself, a 20 year old version, and you could give that version of you a piece of advice based on the life you've lived, the wisdom you've gained so far. What would you tell your younger version? Oh, without a doubt, I would say start immediately um, breaking down the part of you that has any desire to be separate, isolate, be alone, um, use alone solitude or aloneness as an excuse. I would say start uh, breaking down the patterns that I was raised with and become a truly communal oriented and service oriented person. I would say that would be the single best piece of advice I could give my 20 year old self. Would that version of you listen? No, not at all. It would completely <laughs> ridiculous. It would say, I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing about it. Like, is that version going to listen? And, you know, youth usually is just, they have it all figured out, you know? So. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. What do you like the best about living in Italy? What is it? The, 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 what are the highlights? What do you love the most about living in that country? What I love the most about living in the country is, I mean, there is a character to Italy that you've experienced, right? It's very contained in itself and with a lot of beauty. Um, overall, the people are very friendly and it's very different that way. So a lot more smiles, a lot more hellos, um, a lot more just easy, casual blending. Um, you know, when I was in Los Angeles and then Northern California, Northern California was a little bit better, but Los Angeles, I had to get out of there because I mean, it, it just, the amount of loneliness and anger has just gotten extreme, um, for all the reasons, you know, and Italy is very different in that way. There was, uh, in the winter time, this last winter, we went to uh, a place here in Kansas city called harvesters. And it's a food bank and you volunteer and you do your thing. And um, I was up there with a guy from L.A. and he was he was an older guy. He had he was a grandparent and he was just like, man, I can't believe how nice you guys are here. Like where I came from, people don't talk. They don't do you know, there's just so many aspects of his life now that he's just embraced. He misses the weather, but it's just a different thing. Like the people he he really, you know, has embraced and enjoyed. So. Um, what I loved when I was in Italy is how many ways people would say grazie 
grazie, yeah. grazie. You know, there's, I, I love that. I got to the point where it was like people were throwing IA on the end of it and almost singing it, grazie. You know, it was so fun to hear all that, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, yeah. And, but, I, you know, I also spend a good amount of time in uh, in India each year. Yeah. So then those, I swear, man, on the whole, in general, the, the friendliest people, just so open hearted, like incredible. I love the Indian people. I remember I, I, I was running a computer lab for the YMCA years ago and there was a guy that came in and I was only offered a job that was paying like seven fifty back in like 2003. I mean, way below this guy's grade. He graduated from Mahatma Gandhi University, had all of these certifications and technology, like blew me out of the water. I'm like, dude, I can't do this. He was like, you don't understand where I come from. This would be my foothold in this country. We, he ended up not taking the job. It was just, it, it was too much. But I always have felt an endearment towards the Indian people. They're always so nice and giving and smart and just ready to go. You know, there's just a level of them and their spirituality too. Their, their spiritual acumen is just always so humbling and good to see. They just have such a good swag about how they move through this life. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different than what I grew up with. And uh, so it's been really good to be allowed to, you know, invited to experience that whole side of the world that I never knew about during yeah. my formative, early formative years. Sure. They're all, they're all formative years, right? But right. Early. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm curious, you know, as someone that travels a lot, has seen a lot of different cultures, if you could witness one event in human history with your own eyes, what would you love to have seen? Oh, um, all right. Oh. <laughs> I stumped you. I've never, about, I've never thought about that before. <laughs> um, okay, I think, I, I mean, since I am an Ayurvedic person, I think I would love to experience an event in history of like, what was really the dawning of that way of life? Yeah. You know, so that would take me back thousands of years. But like, when did that moment happen where in whatever person or group of people, all of a sudden that intuition hit and they understood something they didn't before, you know, and then it started a whole chain reaction. Yeah, that would be fascinating. Yeah, I think that would be good to be present for that. For sure. So, Victor, everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Well, I don't run the show, actually. <laughs> um, I, I work I work in a team. Um, I am a runner of the show. But who am I? That's the eternal question. Um, actually, recently in my life, I've been reevaluating that uh, a lot, to tell you the truth. And I I know I know that. I've made a lot of assumptions. I'm someone who has created a lot of illusions about the way things are and the way the world works. And I know that that's creating a lot of the things that go on for me and around me and who I'm in relationship with. And I know that I'm a person who is really looking for a deeper sense of self but I can tell that I haven't really gotten there quite yet. So Victor, if anyone out there wants to hire you, learn more about your practice, what you do, anything about your world, where can they go? They can go to www.iiayurveda.com and that's our whole website and you know the whole shebang. They can email me at reception at iiayurveda.com or Victor at iiiveda.com. I'm happy to talk personally. And I'm really easy to get a hold of. It's no problem. Uh, I'm trying to connect. I'm trying to do this. I want to help people with their health. And I want people to have a different experience of getting help with their health um, than what they may have already had access to. And, you know, if, if anyone wants to call and just have like a, you know, five to 10 minute chat, get to know me a little better, see if it's a right fit. Um, that's all free. There's no charge to that. So I can offer that. And yeah, easy. I, we teach classes. We have an Ayurveda school. 
uh, that will be starting in April. So if anyone wants to become an Ayurvedic practitioner, then that's a big, you know, training course and all that stuff. And we have smaller workshops, all that sort of stuff. Right on. This has been great. Victor, thank you so much for opening up about this. I, I never realized this much about this level of medicine. So it's been fascinating. Thank you for opening up. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Before we go, I never want to assume, how do I pronounce your last name? Briere. Okay, good. We got it. Victor, thank you, man. Semi-best of the old country. All right.